Really quick, have we actually talked about the whole time Juicy went over to Australia? No, for good reason. We have not done that. Talked about it in therapy. I had to talk about it in federal court. Uh, deposition doesn't count towards views. You were gone for a long time and mm -hmm. not a lot of videos were posted. So, okay, dude, I was too busy getting covered in butter and literally hit by cars. Well, I think that sentence alone needs a little bit of expansion on. So, yeah, why don't, why don't we expand on that? We've got nothing else to do today. Nothing planned. Let's just talk about this for today's video. Good. Story time with the boys. Josh, you sharing your camera? Josh is not. There he is. Yeah, you dirty little Thought you could get away with it. Can I just say before we start, I lent Juicy a phone so he would have internet and uh, I only just looked at the browser history yesterday and it's not good. <laughs> share it. <laughs> share the browser history. I can't. <laughs> Don't share it. For legal reasons we can't discuss, you are not allowed to share the browser history. I can't, yeah. How the f*** did you even get here, dude? I get so many DMs being like, how the f*** did he even get there? And sometimes it's something I tried not to think about, like how I got here to be on this planet. I don't want to think about that shit. You specifically, how the f*** did you get here? Well, I heard from a little birdie that he didn't really initially leave to go go record with the boys. There was a different reason oh. why he left. We called that reason pussy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. I cannot describe to you the amount of Australians that have threatened to crucify me and burn me because I went to Australia. Uh, that's just how we say hello. It's 2021. There's a global pandemic. Australians can't mm. get home. Juicy somehow mm. gets on a plane to come get his dick wet. People are angry. Okay, first of all, it didn't go like that. So let me tell you. Let me tell you about this story. <laughs> I literally got a message of this woman being like, hey, my husband's been stuck overseas. He hasn't met his kid, all this sort of stuff. Mm. How come you got like this guy who dances around a shape or something? And now I see videos mm. of like, um, you know, you throwing food out the, the back of cars and shit like that and covering yourself in butter. How's this fair? And I was like, it's not bitch and swipe left. It was funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a word for that. It's called money. Here goes Molly putting down poor people again. So here I am nine months ago, right? We're talking about the idea of me going to Australia. I have a girlfriend over there I haven't met. We have all these cool ideas for the boys videos, but I know it's going to be an insane process from what everyone's told me to get there because your country was closed like it still is. So I just say to um the beautiful people at Click. Well, hold up. Who's Click to those who don't know? Click is just a bunch of boneheads. <laughs> Click is our management. Click runs up all of our uh, shits. Big shout out to Click. Richard, I love you. Please answer my DMs. I miss you, daddy. So I tell them, you know, we're, we're talking about it back and forth. Neither of us really know the process because nobody does it. Nobody's like gone through it. So we're like, okay, let's fucking do this. Okay, let's go to Australia and film some crazy videos. Yeah. Yeah. Skip forward nine months of uh, hearing absolutely nothing except daily updates of, yeah, uh, the lawyer's on it. Don't worry. Literally nine months later, one day I, um, I get the message from Richard and he's like, we're submitting your application. <gasps> so basically I had to make a fucking resume for your government saying, yes, I'm a fucking musician. I'm a fucking multimedia star. And your government's like, yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Let's <laughs> let him in. This can take up to a month to get approved. Within two hours, because nobody's submitting them, I I got the okay. Come to Australia. Doors are open. Some sad woman who's like sitting at her desk thinking like, I'm going to need to find a new job. I haven't seen any paperwork in months. And suddenly yours lands on her desk and she looks you <laughs> up on YouTube. It, it like floats through the window. You see fruit snacks? She's working at home. Her little kid's like, juicy fruit snacks? Hey, you fucking serious? You got a fucking resume for juicy fruit snacks? Let him in the country, you dumb bitch. Can I just say that this is the exact opposite experience of me getting into the United States. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> so here we are. It's been nine months of me spending a lot of money and hearing absolutely nothing about coming to Australia. Meanwhile, we were just all recording VR together. And we're just like waiting for you to come over here. Like, oh, it should be any moment now. For like eight months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I get the okay. And it's like literally uh, Charlie, another person on click message to me is like, oh, I can schedule your flight for uh, four days from now. And I'm like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're packing away for six months. You, you got to do it in four days? Three months. Yeah. Basically, when I, when I booked this flight to Upside Down Land, you book it like a normal flight, except it costs like $8,000. <laughs> 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 it cost you $8,000 for the flight alone. When you hang out with poor people, sometimes you have to pay for petrol money. Like if you go in places. <laughs> this is basically because there's no planes flying anywhere. Juicy had to pay petrol money to the airplane. You had to pay for the fuel. <laughs> there you go, spot me for some 
fucking gas. So yeah, we schedule it. I'm like, holy fuck, it's actually happening. Cause I had no faith really. There's nobody knew if I'd actually make it in. The government could literally just been like, oh yeah, this guy's gay. Go fuck yourself. But you know. I don't think that's how it works, dude. The day comes, my stuff's packed, going to the airport. I got like a stack of paperwork this thick on like the amount of shit I needed to get into the country while it was closed. And I'm just gorilla gripping in my hand, dude. I'm like walking yeah. around like every, every person I see, whether they work at the airport or not, I'm just showing it to them. <laughs> you know, like, I'm just like, please, I'm supposed to be here. My mom drives me to the airport. My mom, my stepdad, paperwork in hand, my cock in the other. I walk through the door to the airport. <laughs> Spirits are high. I'm feeling good. My mom's fucking crying already. We haven't even walked in the airport yet. I go to get my boarding pass and there was a small hiccup. So mm. the, the plane ticket was fine, right? But I had to get some sort of like electronic identification number or something from the Australian government. And the lady's like, um, yeah, you just need to go to this website and get it. I go to the website and it says, Sorry, this website's not available because the borders are closed. No. Because it's an Australian website. Meanwhile, you were already approved. I was approved to come in, but I had to have this number, but I couldn't get the number because the country was closed. So I show the lady at the desk. I'm like, listen, I literally have a an actual like note from the government saying that I'm allowed to come to Australia. It has a cool QR code and everything. And I'm like, please, just like, is this enough? And she's like, well, you gotta have that number. I've never seen that piece of paper before. Fast forward like 10 minutes, dude. I'm and like angry crying and i literally tell her i'm like i want to speak to whoever the fuck is above you i'm getting fucking pissed at her because she keeps telling me the same goddamn thing so this old guy comes out right this fat old guy and he's like oh can i help you and i'm like i'm going to australia and he's like <laughs> Okay. He does the same thing to me as this lady. My mom's crying. I'm literally about to kill the, the nearest person I see because it's been <laughs> nine months of preparation for them to be like, well, you don't have this number. So I tell the guy, I finally look at him, loosen my grip a little bit. I'm like, mm. call Australia. <laughs> just look him up on the phone book. I see him over there on the phone. He's calling Australia. It's happening. <laughs> and he's just like, eh, well then, passport no. number. Yeah, Gage Gibson. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, yeah, I got a pen. And he jots down this fucking number. And he's like, okay, just give me a second. He's putting this fucking number, dude, into the computer. And it prints out a fucking boarding pass. So the dude is absolutely fucking <laughs> shocked. He hangs up the phone. He goes, they gave me an override code. He hands me the boarding pass and looks at me and he goes, I've never had to use an override code. <laughs> 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 and then he, he goes... You have 20 minutes till your flight to LA leaves. Better go get on that plane. What's your thought here, dude? Because you have accepted the fact. I mean, I accepted that I wasn't going to Australia. And then they you... called Australia and they said, let him in. Were you surprised when he was like, okay, yeah, no, actually that does work out. No, I, the whole time I was telling them, I'm like, call somebody in Australia. And they're oh, like, right. who would I call? And I'm like, I don't <laughs> care. Just call somebody. Because I knew that Australia had yeah. all my paperwork. It just yeah. was the US didn't have it. It was at my house in my bin. <laughs> <laughs> Plot twist Not actually called me, dude. So it's Orlando Airport. I have 20 minutes to get to my gate. So if you mm. have ever been to Orlando Airport, you know that's not enough time. So I literally can. I tell my mom, I'm, 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 she's bawling her eyes out. I'm like, yep. Yeah. Okay, bye. And I just can bolt, <laughs> dude. I get on my plane to LA. I'm calming down. I'm fucking just victory fast forward we land in la bro i get my shit i get on the plane that's going to australia everything's good smooth so far i'm feeling a lot better i realized that i'm not going to become a victim in that day's story as i go to get onto my plane to australia first mm -hmm. weird note there's two people on it two people two australians on that plane on a full-size international boeing plane so you went to first class right they wouldn't let anyone sit in first class but they let you have your own whatever you wanted imagine for a second you've been waiting for for months to get home your kids have upset they've probably been born in america they've just narrowly been getting shot you finally get a plane back to australia everything is going to be okay you sit down you look up and this mother walks on the plane this fucking juicy fruit snacks himself walks on the plane and you're stuck in a giant pressurized cabin with him breathing in his farts for the next 16 hours like every time they start to fall asleep i just walk up to him and just no oh, no don't touch me and just walk by <laughs> It was all smooth sailing from here. I was sitting on the plane with my two other occupants and we were about to go to Australia. I would like to say it was that easy, but just as soon as I sat down and buckled on my seatbelt, a random lady in a fucking suit with glasses came in and drugged me off the plane. What? 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 Yep. You've never told us this. That's some big information to leave out. You thought you were all sweet. And then what happened? She come up and what? She beat you? No, she walks up and goes, Gage Gibson. And I'm like, 
I'm like, yes. <laughs> She's like, can you come with me real quick? I'm like, dude, what the f is this dude they pulled me <laughs> off like i was a an international drug smuggler she looks at me and she goes i just need you to help me make some sense of this you <laughs> look on a monitor it's the boy it's your it's your youtube channel <laughs> no i'm never going to australia <laughs> and at this point i'm like so exhausted i'm not mad i'm not sad i'm just disappointed and i literally look at her i still am gorilla gripping this like 40 sheets of paperwork that i had i'm like here just take these go look at them i said call australia I literally said call Australia. <laughs> no, you did it. Guess what that bitch did? Guess what she did? What? what? What did she do? She called Australia. Guess what they said? Let him in. She walks up to me as confused as the first guy who had to call Australia. She hands me the paperwork. She sits me down back in my seat. And she's like, you're good, I guess. Well, sorry about that. Have a good day. Achoo! Everyone treated me like I was some sort of fucking like... Like they didn't know who I was. Like they were very confused <laughs> on like... What? American going to Australia? What the f <laughs> Like... <laughs> That's pretty much the extent of the story because when I got to Australia, that's when shit turned bad. I get off the plane in Australia, I walk up to the f***ing customs and I'm like, this is gonna be shit. I'm gorilla gripping my paperwork. And I walk up to the guy and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, do you need this? And he goes, oh no, you're right, mate. He'd even scan my passport. He'd even look at it. I just walked straight into f***ing Australia. He didn't give a shit. <laughs> So when I got to Australia, everything was fine. And then the military took me off my plane, shoved me on a bus and put me in a box for three weeks. So that was epic. It was 14 days. That was at this stage. Quarantine juicy. So this is the point where your girlfriend and Molly kept coming up to your window and throwing food up to your window. Something like that. Right? Yeah. I wasn't allowed to open up my windows. I wasn't allowed to turn on the AC. I wasn't allowed to go and open any doors. They charged me to do my laundry. Well, at this stage, the rest of the boys kind of realized something was wrong. I lost a piece of myself. But um, I think it kind of contributed to the content we ended up recording yeah fun manicness i was actually losing my mind but yeah so yeah that's how i got to australia after two weeks um they let me leave my jail cell and what happened i just walk out and you know how weird it felt opening up that f***ing door that i literally wasn't allowed to open for two weeks i was waiting there with a coffee and a hug i walked out dude i kissed molly on the lips sensually for at least eight seconds you didn't have air conditioning and at like 2 a.m you messaged me it's like 40 degrees in your room you're sweating panicking yeah and i wasn't allowed to open up any windows they were like like barred shut. I went and bought the most expensive fan I could find. So yeah, dude, that's I got a quarantine, kissed Molly, went met everybody at Click. That's how you smuggle juicy fruit snacks into Australia. And every Australian threatening to kill me for taking up these precious plane seats. Listen, there's not one mother on those planes there's nobody if you called australia and said your name they wouldn't even know who the f you are okay so <laughs> don't get mad at me oh, when Christ. they call australia and and the guy on the phone goes uh-huh don't get mad at me thus the adventure began of us doing oh. Fun IRL shit, and yes. I barely knew how to speak English by the time I got out, dude. I was like reverting into a f***ing Neanderthal. And we're like, wow, that sucks, dude. Do you have a webcam? Because we need to record right now. We're like, oh, man. Yeah. You got some old lady calling you at 8.30 in the morning every day to see if you killed yourself. Oh, yet. yeah, dude, I forgot about that. There was a lady who called every... Dude, are you serious? Yes. There was a lady who called every single morning just to make sure I didn't kill myself. They have that in every hotel quarantine. Every single morning at 8.30, sure. The same lady would call and go hello mr gibson how's your health today how's your mental health today and i'd just go Ugh. and she'd be like okay is there anything you need i'd go Ugh. <laughs> and then i'd hang up we know that you've come here to see uh you know to see you to see this person that you've really been looking forward to seeing if you're interested it'd be a really good opportunity to film some real life videos and we, had, we had to figure it out quickly because two weeks of three months had already gone and we, we obviously we didn't want to be like hey welcome now let's start doing work because as much fun as the videos are a lot goes into it i think we planned to do like a video a month or something we ended up doing what three videos a week yeah we spent 30 grand on videos flight times traveling every single week three or four days out of the week we'd be doing boys josh would come to us we'd go to him back and forth back and forth I'm, i was in a different state to those two they were in sydney i'm in south australia and we yeah. kind of said oh rather than flying every week one group will fly to the other every second week so every yeah. two mm -hmm. weeks you're getting on a planes and it was fucking, tell you what I, I, I could have really used that woman calling me every morning at 8 30 to make drugs <laughs> yeah <myself>. dude <laughs> <laughs> that was a blur dude so if anyone wants to know why we slow down i mean 
Eddie and Narrowed are good. They're just fucking profiting off of all the work that we're flying. Yeah, they're just sitting in the background collecting the fucking check. Eddie used to call me and say, thanks for making me all the money, boys. <laughs> It's an actual thing. He used to say that. So, Juicy, how does it feel that you don't ever get a break? <laughs> oh, it feels great, dude. I'm just getting spit-roasted by Australia and the United States. Did any, at any stage you ever think to yourself, like, one day I was going to end up under armed guard, but not in this exact scenario? Oh, 100%. 100%, <laughs> dude. Basically, yeah, that's, that's how I got to Australia. Our next step was record a bunch of boy shit. It wasn't mm. easy. It cost a ridiculous amount of money to get there. We had the police called on us. We went to our chiropractors to get our bodies put back in shape. Molly actually caused me bodily damage. He T-boned me and I had to go to the <laughs> doctors. When you, when you sum it up, dude, we had what? Legal threats, assault threats. Yes. Police yes. called on us. We got injured pretty badly. Some of these videos that we're covering, I could talk about for like three hours. Through all these adventures, if you didn't have a clue what the hell we were talking about, stay tuned for part two. <gasps> oh! Did the rhyme. He did, the rhyme. he did it again! He did the rhyme! He did a rhyme! He I'm improvised Dr. the Susan. rhyme! Oh. oh, hold up, hold up, hang on a sec, hang on a second. Yeah, hello? No, no, I'm I'm still here. Is he actually on the phone? Scared. Thanks for giving me that woman's number, Juicy. Yeah, I signed you up, don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. <laughs>